Yo guys, this is Mo Verney on the move, live in studio. Welcome to my show. This week is all about Tiff Sightman. It's amazing. I got into a lot of parties, but also covering a lot of stuff. You know, I got to see a lot of A-list Hollywood celebrities. But most importantly, I always like to share with you guys. You know, although it's outside, it's raining, make sure you bring umbrella or you know what? What better way to use the Toronto Path underground when it's raining? Because you will be safe and protected. And most importantly, you can also spend some time watching my show right now, live here, Mulverney on the show on the move. Now, before I start, check out my purple shades, purple uh, blazer, and there's a meaning to it. Because today, my guest is a special guest. She's the founder of Freedom. And you want to know more about Freedom? Make sure you keep it locked to check out my show and my guests. And her name is Shay Infidiada. So stay tuned. We're going to interview her and what's the meaning of purple color. Now, first off, I was very starstruck when the moment I went to James Franco after party as he came here to, for TIFF and he came here to promote his film, The Sound and the Furry. Now, most importantly, I was able to be a god exclusive to snap some pictures. And you know what? I would like to share with you. It was a very exclusive hotel in a hotel sec section and there were only six of us and we we're able to snap some pictures let's check it out you know the first moment i saw james franco i also re we realized that in the movie janet jones gresky and wayne gresky was there to support his wife as you can see from this exclusive picture uh, special shout out to thank you to pr evolution pr for inviting me to cover this look how beautiful that picture is wayne gresky with janet jones gresky and James Franco is wearing a toque. Now, a lot of my followers are asking me, why is James wearing a toque, right? Apparently, he's preparing for his next film, and he, his head was bald. So therefore, he wore a toque, but you know what? It is a new style, and James Franco looks good in everything. Girls dig it anyways. So Janet Jones, the moment she was at the backdrop, she was ready to pose. That's why she was an actress and model. And I think it is a very special film for her because she was always a model, but she is now having a film in here to be an actress. So kudos to him. And special, I got to say, Wayne Gretzky, the NHL legend, to be able to see him up close and personal will definitely be one of my tip moments. And you know, the second thing I got invited was Real TV Films Social Lounge. And it was right here in TIFF. And the reason why there's a social lounge is for actors, directors, producers, and all the media to mingle and to see what kind of products that celebrities love to uh, wear, such as jewelry and all kinds of things. Check out the scene, it's very lovely. I still remember those fresh strawberries along with a shot of uh, tequila shot inside the strawberry. I thought that was a very good idea. Can't wait to test it a little bit more. Now keep it locked, check out the commercials. No, in case it's raining tonight and you've never been to Brofield Place, check out using the path and check out uh, Brofield Place. Lots of vendors out there and beautiful place to be. Now, you know, I also went to uh, check out TIFF. I didn't watch any films, but I bumped into Denzel Washington. He was here to promote his latest film, The Equalizers. Check out how crazy the fans are when they saw Denzel. Denzel, 
Got screwed on the toe again. He hit my hand. It was a crazy, uh, the crowd went crazy, everybody wanted to get an autograph, picture, selfie, everything, but you know what, he was trying to please everybody and he waved at everybody, he makes everybody happy at the end. Now I also went to Nikki Beach at the Spoke Club, which was held for four nights. It was amazing because Nikki Beach is famous in Miami and they always come here for it the fourth year now. And every time they set up Nikki Beach theme at the Spoke Club so that people get to kind of get a the beach kind of styled and everything. So on Sunday, I got to try the brunch. It was amazing. There's a beautiful cheese station on the bar, tender on the, on the counter, as well as there's all you can eat pastry and beautiful breakfast. And if you never try it, you got to try it at the Spoke Club, Nikki Beach. Check out the food right here. This is Mulberry versus Food. We're at Nikki Beach, the Spoke Club. So Nikki Beach at night is not only just for party, there is also Nikki Beach Smoke Club at brunch. Just check out this pastry, this is amazing. Nikki Beach Toronto. Mmm, very yummy. Amazing pastry here. The Bernie first experience out here. That is yummy, right? And the best part about it was that after the brunch, there apparently was a fashion show, female swimwear fashion show, right at the rooftop of the Spoke Club. So you know what, it was amazing. Brunch, you have a nice drink, and then you see beautiful ladies on a catwalk on the rooftop at the Spoke Club. Check it out. Beautiful concept, Tiff is still alive, it's still lively right now, during this week, it's amazing. You know what, keep a lock, I'm going to interview my guest, and we will show the commercial right now.
Yo, 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 welcome back to Movernia and Move live in studio. Beside me is Gas, and she is the founder of this special charitable organization called Freedom, and her name is Shay Infidiata. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. Now, Shay, the reason why I'm wearing purple shades and purple blazer is because your charitable organization has purple as the color. Which I love, and <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that you did that for me today, which is yes. so grateful. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, so purple, I know you kind of said before that I was going to share the meaning of it. And purple for us is a symbol of freedom, uh, meaning to fight slavery. And when you think of purple back in uh, ancient times, it was only the royals that were afforded because they were the only ones that could afford luxuries like that to wear uh, wear purple. So the dye was a very rare commodity. And unfortunately, in our world today, there are millions of people that see freedom as a luxury when it's a basic human right. Mm -hmm. And so part of the idea of freedom and fighting human trafficking, fighting slavery today, is that we want to give back that which people were born with that basic dignity and human right and it's been stripped from them. So, you know, in 25 years from now and 10 years from now, we would love to see a sea of purple across the world that everybody is able to, um, to be able to have that and it not be seen as a luxury. Nice. Interesting. I, mm -hmm. I, I really like the mission that you have. Uh, the first time I actually heard about freedom was when I was last week during the TIFF uh, basket style and I was wearing purple and I saw uh, one of your members told me more about freedom. And I got to say, um, it kind of shocked me, but you know, like she was telling me that there is human trafficking around the world. Right. But especially in Canada, people, especially Canadians, would never really think about human trafficking in Canada because we was we're always perceived as a world class country. Absolutely. So when I heard about it, it kind of shocking me. But at the same time, also this freedom also raised awareness that such an organization actually exists in Canada, which to me is also important. Thank you. Yeah. Like you know, like you said, Canadians, um, we live. We're fortunate to live in such a country where freedom is something that Canadians are proud of. You know, if you travel the world, and I've been afforded that I've been able to travel to many different places around the globe, and as soon as you tell people that you're Canadian, you know, people from all different areas in the world, they are so envious because Canada is really a symbol of freedom in our world. And so when I tell Canadians that human trafficking, slavery is existing in our own country, it is very hard to believe because we think it's a problem that's happening in Nepal, happening in India, happening in Thailand, yes. yet it's happening right here in Canada. And the two most prevalent forms of human trafficking are forced labor and sexual exploitation. And when you think of um, the demographics of who is being enslaved, the vast majority are, are young girls, young boys and girls. Uh, the average age of entry into forced prostitution in Canada is just 13 years old. And we've been blessed where we've been able to help to fund the rescue of over 280 victims just in the past 18 months. And 87% of those victims are Canadian. Wow. Yeah. Staggering. Wow. Yeah, so, it is staggering numbers. Yeah. Um, so how did you all start it? Because I, I know that you started at a very young age. Yes. And you have that mission to get this organization out? Um, I was I was 18 years old and I was living in the United States at the time in uh, in paradise as most people would say it in in the islands of Hawaii yes and I, w I lived in Oahu which is where Waikiki Honolulu is and our our, our dorm was a hotel that was on Kuhio Avenue and when you stay there long enough you learn it to be known as Candy Lane and this is where the track was which just simply means like where the girls walk and at the time I was 18 I have a very strong backbone on me and I thought you know my dad had said to me I'm leaving my my favorite daughter mainly because I'm his only daughter <laughs> but his favorite daughter nonetheless um, down in in this area where you're seeing pimps you're seeing prostitutes at that time and saying am I crazy for leaving my daughter here and I thought you know it can't be that bad if our dorm is there right. can't be that unsafe and it, my journey over about two and a half years was you know seeing um, half of it was the hotel like I said and half of it was a dorm so on the hotel side you would have these girls going in and out I saw pimps getting arrested from my lobby and um, being that I was 18 I saw so many girls that were younger than me 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Yes, there were 
women, young women that were older than me, but the vast majority were younger than me. And it, it pegged a question for myself of whether you agreed with prostitution was right or wrong, was irrelevant. I wanted to leave all my own bias, my own judgment at the door and just ask the simple question, why? Why would a 13 year old choose to be in this? And you saw every color white black asian you know eastern european all races were represented on the track and so why what draws a 14 year old a 15 year old into this industry and it's a much longer story which we don't have time to go into today but what i started to learn and i worked with these girls for um about two and a half years and learning their stories and engaging with them that the word prostitute that we equate so much with choice is widely misrepresented and the more accurate word to be using is prostituted and when you learn that word you're introduced to this world of human trafficking mm -hmm. and that's when i found out that there's 27 million people in slavery today there's more people in slavery than ever before in history and being Canadian and living in the United States, I was going, where, where is our world on this issue? We live, I live in the most free nation on the planet and Canada being represented. And how is this happening right in front of my eyes in the U.S.? And so that for me is what started my journey. And because I was so young at that time, I thought if it was me, I'd be praying, I'd be hoping, I'd be wishing that somebody would see me as a victim and not as a lot of negative stigmas that we would attribute to seeing a girl or a young female in that position. And I'll let your listeners and viewers come up with their own words, bad words that we shouldn't say on online <laughs> in their heads, but these negative stigmas and actually seeing these, these young girls as victims. And I just thought, I don't know what I'm going to do, but as long as I have a voice, I'm going to do something. And I had no idea that, that it would amount in 2010 to founding Freedom, uh, our organization that is dedicated to fighting human trafficking in Canada and abroad. Wow. And you know what? Yeah. You, you, you raised two good points. The voice so that people can see the other side. There's always a reason to the other side of the story and people should not just, but just be judging by the book right. on this cover right. and everybody have a history of why they're there and you provide a voice. Now, tell us about um, freedom. Like, wh what, do you encounter any challenges when you first develop this organization? Because like you, you're young and how do you form the people to h back you up and create yeah. this organization uh, it's a uh, it's a great question I actually have never been asked that question believe it or not so that's that's a great question um, it, and believe it or not when I first started out I actually had to convince people that this was happening you know like we were discussing earlier this isn't an issue that Canadians a are aware of and B that we think if it is happening that it's happening in Canada we think Nepal India Thailand so forth so when I first started out in Canada you know, going to politicians, going to members of parliament, going to councillors, going to ministers, even to our own, you know, Stephen Harper to say, we have a problem here in Canada. And nobody, nobody wanted, not that they didn't want to acknowledge it, but truly didn't think at the time that we had an issue. And so um, I'll remember in 2010, I'll share a story with you guys that um, it was Project Opapa, which is actually Canada's largest human trafficking case that's ever gone before Canadian courts. Uh, 26 victims involved. It was a forced labor uh, dominant case. And our frontline partners that all they do is rescue and work with the police to rescue and rehabilitate victims came to me and said, like, we've got we've got five victims and we can't get money from anywhere and literally digging into my own personal pocket to pull out hundred and fifty dollars to feed a family over a couple days because nobody believed at the time that human trafficking was happening and yet now for fast forward to 2014 it is the largest human trafficking case that has ever gone before Canadian courts so we've come a long way but that's been a major challenge uh, legislation has been a major challenge because we we've had lack thereof um, and so so we've been working on that and to date we've now amended two criminal codes in Canada that free them as a stakeholder uh, too and we also work with uh, the federal government as a stakeholder in our national strategy which we finally have which we were working for a couple of years to get so that was from that standpoint was was I think really our our biggest challenge was getting the awareness out educating everybody you know from taxi cab drivers to people on the streets to lawyers and doctors and professions all in between that um, that this is happening here and we need to do something about it in mm -hmm. Canada it is we will not tolerate our daughters and our sons and persons 
to be bought or sold in this country. Um, and I mean, the easier challenge, you know, is, and when you're asking, you know, how did you get people to rally together? I think that people, people are always looking for purpose in life and being able to, in a way to give back. And there's some things that we just don't relate to, like things like not having clean water. For the most Canadians, you know, we woke up this morning, we turned on the tap to brush our teeth, and not only are we rich because we're able to do that, but we can't fathom what it's like to not have that. Um, and human trafficking, when you think of it here, um, it could be somebody's daughter, it could be somebody's sister, it could be somebody's son, and the reality is, is that it is, and it's happening here. Mm -hmm. So I think for when, when I first was telling stories of real victims that we were um, a part of their rescue, people just naturally said, what can I do? You know, um, how can I get on board? You know, that's even how I'm sitting here today. You know, you came and met us last week and you said, well, what can I do? You know, I'm, I'm in media, I'm in PR. Right. I'm going to use my time here today to help spread the word. Um, Evolution Public Relations, we're their charity of choice because that's what they can do to help us get the word out, you know? So it, it actually came very quickly where we just had people pop up and say, this is what I can do, this is what I can offer, how can I come on board? Yeah, that's right, because my show is all about um, a platform, and also I'm very passionate on charity. So the moment I, I saw it last week, I said, you know what, let's make it happen. Get it, get you on the show today, uh, today so that we, you can talk about more about, there's a special walk on uh, in two weeks. There is, are you coming? Put I, you I, on the spot? I, yeah, I, I'm coming. I, I'm not once really I know I'm going. That, but you can put me on the spot, <laughs> but you know what, I will be coming. All right. <laughs> So, and you better come in purple. You got to come in your purple gown. Yeah, purple, man. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, our, it's our fifth annual Freedom Walk that's coming up, presented by the Fairmont Royal York for the third year in a row, which we're obviously very grateful for their support. And uh, it's going to be Saturday, September 27th. Registration opens at 9 a.m., and then the Freedom Ceremony will begin at uh, 10. It's family friendly. Uh, so bring the strollers, bring the kids. We have a kids zone. So rain or shine, right? Rain or shine, yes. Yeah, so come dressed appropriate. Uh, we are, we will be going on regardless of what the weather is doing. But we're crossing our fingers that it'll be comfortable, not too hot, not too cold. None of this rain stuff that's happening today. Um, and then, yeah, we you'll hear from some amazing speakers. Uh, we're excited that our keynote speaker actually this year is a human trafficking federal prosecutor for the Department of Justice in the U.S. that he's wow. coming up and he's just going to blow your mind. Amazing speaker, so inspirational what he does around the world and so we're excited to have him. We have a few different ministers that are coming out which I can't give away all the details here today so you'll have to come on the 27th. Yeah, you gotta come and check it out. Yes, you'll have to come uh, but it's just a great morning. You'll hear from survivors of human trafficking. There'll be tons of law enforcement there and it's just a great way for the community to come together. You're going to learn about the cause. You're going to be ignited with passion and then we go out for a very calm 4K walk so don't worry if you haven't trained for it you don't need to. You can wear whatever shoes you're wearing right now. You can wear those on this 4K walk I promise you um, and it's we've got the little ones on the walk so we keep that in mind and we're the ones that are fighting for them so we want to include them uh, in the walk so it's really catered for families and I think one special thing was there are actually two walks happening on the same day right there is yes so I, I thought that was pretty cool at the same time right? yes we are we have our inaugural event that's taking place in Ottawa this year and we are very excited. I just got back from there uh, last weekend and they are so pumped and ready to go. So it is gonna be pretty cool that in, in our nation we're gonna have two freedom walks happening at the same time and uh, all fighting for the same cause. Right, now we're gonna check out a, a video footage of you and tell the audience more about freedom. So we'll check out the video footage. There are days in, in my industry um, of fighting this injustice, but it's, it's hard, it's ugly. It's difficult, um, it's horrendous, and some days I ask myself, why am I doing this? And the answer simply is for that survivor. When you meet a survivor of trafficking and you, you have been a small part, sometimes a bigger part, in their rescue, rehabilitation, restoring dignity, there's, there's nothing else. That's, sorry. I get emotional every time. Despite the hardships, Shay presses on. A timeless educator for the cause, she visits schools like King's Christian so Shay, we got to see Oakland some of your footage about sure freedom. The next now, crop of checking out freedom, the tools to there is a 
the, the logo and design it, it really sticks to my mind it looks like there's a speaker mm -hmm. like kind of speaking out with the volume going out yeah tell us about the the, per, the, the design of sure it. Um, so if you look up in the dictionary um, any word you'll you'll see that speaker symbol to hear what it sounds like and there's the phonetic spelling of the word so that you can properly pronounce the word you're reading and so um, when I when I was thinking about freedom the word itself I was thinking about a word that when you when you say it it can be interchanged and really what we're wanting to do is to free those enslaved so free them but it's a play on words and I get all the time you know even you know here today is uh, some of your viewers are listening is it free them is it freedom is it free them is it freedom both are correct and that's really the play on words um, but that's what we're wanting to do is free them those enslaved and provide them with freedom mm -hmm. and so that's uh, that's kind of how the logo came to be now you know like me and probably the audience will be interested to know the money that is raised and mm -hmm. uh, the, the charity of the organization what are some of the segments or, or how the, the money uh, being used to help help them like like there will be different sectors that you so so this walk in particular um, and this has been this way for the past four years is that the purpose of this walk is to raise funds strictly for victim services so everything that is raised from the fifth annual freedom walk and the inaugural walk in Ottawa all of those funds raised are going to go to rescuing and rehabilitating victims of trafficking although there's many other things that obviously we do things like advocacy and education and, and uh, promotional pieces all of the funds that morning are only going towards a victim services so everything that's raised will go to be restoring a victim's life and to rescuing other girls and uh, young males out of um, exploitation now you have a run in uh, ontario one in oh one in toronto and one in ottawa what about the rest of the the nation is there anything in the future projects that is in your mind um, yeah I mean I would love of course to have one in all of the major cities if I can <laughs> live through the stress of, <laughs> of, of putting them on you know just being really honest but um, that is definitely um, the vision of free them and we've have an incredible team in Ottawa and they're gonna do a great job and if uh, we've got other people in places like Vancouver and Edmonton Calgary um, even in Winnipeg where the province of Manitoba has really led in many ways um, legislation uh, leadership across Canada for how to um, implement measures to fight human trafficking so I would love to see a walk go there and they've done there has been human trafficking walks free them hasn't put one on uh, but I think there's a place for it and I think you know that's that's where we're growing to because we're definitely not moving backwards we're only moving forward so um, yeah across Canada and we've been asked even in Australia so who knows I think we'll we'll take it international at some point now, if people want to find out more about the walk, uh, w where can they find more information about? Uh, the easiest way is just to go to our website, which is freethemwalk.ca. Um, our website is just freethem.ca, but we have one that's just for the walk, and it's the registration. You can go online there. You can register as an individual. You can register as a team. Um, and so whether you're, you could register as a family team, a corporate team, and then you can even be teams within teams. So you can compete with one another. Um, but all of the information is there. If you're in Toronto, it's freethemwalk.ca. If you're in Ottawa, then it's freethemwalkottawa.ca. Shane, I really appreciate yeah, your time thank here. You, thank you. And uh, it really... Hopefully the audience will actually can come feel the passion and, and they will out. come out and uh, for the walk and I'm going to be there. I'm going to wear the purple. I got and it. To come. You know what? <laughs> this is amazing. Really appreciate what you have been doing. Thank and you. It's always tough to be the you know one of the person to found something, to build something, and then get people to believe in your mm -hmm. concept and make it happen. And I really admire what you have done so far. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, check it out. Keep it locked. Next week, check out who I'm, will be on my guest for Moverni Live in Studio on the Move. And Moverni is out here. Peace.